You received a call from an inmate at the Department of Corrections. This call will be recorded and monitored. If you wish to block any future calls of this nature, dial 7 now. To accept this call press 5 now. To decline this call hang up. Well, hello there, Michael. How are you? Well, no, things have been pretty good over here. So, uh, not really going to uh, complain about anything. Ah, yes, yes, the transgender issue. I've been working on that a little bit. No, you know, as long as everybody breaks, I mean, <laughs> as long as everybody follows the law, I'm, I'm fine. And people can do whatever they want. You know, this is America. We have our freedoms. And just don't infringe on the rights of other people. And I think the transgender people are fine. It's just that those who pretend to be transgender, I think that's the issue we have, especially in the state of Washington. Yeah, I've heard of, heard about those in incidents, and I'm, I'm working on a couple of them. And... Uh, I'm really looking to uh, bring this to the attention of the state as well as the DOC because the DOC I think was kind of put on a spot you know when the when the state tells them you have to put people in the prison that the gender they identify with that uh, that puts a lot of folks on the spot especially those who are in a usually a single gender prison and they choose not to go to the opposite gender prison so the women who have a choice of going to the male prison or the female prison they want to stay in the female prison they shouldn't be walking around with a bunch of males likewise a male who chooses to be in the male prison shouldn't be walking around with a bunch of females and I, I know when the people identify as female and they're given the choice of going to the female prison, that could be an advantage to the transgender person. But when I talk to people who are transgender and they're truly transgender, then they're quite happy being in the, the female prison and they're attracted to men. So, uh, that kind of stuff, that, that's their own personal issue and really shouldn't be a big discussion. But I, uh, but some of the female inmates that I talk to, they say there's just quite a few males that's roaming around in there. And even the, the visitors are a little shocked to see that happening. It's almost as if prisons no longer have genity. Uh, gender identification they're just uh, I, I imagine soon in the state of Washington there's just going to be correction centers and there'll, there'll be no gender specific ones and I'm not sure how that'll work out I'm sure there'll be new issues and, and we'll have to increase the staff and counselors and education be a lot of changes going on out there well, yeah, I know in, in the male prison, you don't see a lot of the females that go over there. And the ones I talk to who, they're, they're usually, I wouldn't say that they're, they're transgender. They're just lesbians that kind of lean toward the male side. Some of them... You have 60 seconds remaining. For, uh, maybe a, a sex change. But um, I, I think I think they're happy being in the female prison, and and there's a lot that goes on in there that the public doesn't know about. Yeah, I'm sure you you know quite a bit. But these are changing times, and it's just something I'm looking into, and I'll have to accept myself. But there are dangers, and those dangers need you have 30 seconds remaining put out there, so that when people go and vote on these issues. We can get it fixed up. I don't think we should keep going like this.
Well, yeah, I, I, uh, I'll, I'll do my best to, to uh, resolve the issues that I'm working with. And hopefully, we're not going to see any uh, harm come. They'll be able to work something out and, and keep everybody happy. And I think that's the big problem. They're trying to please everybody. And you just Thank can't. you for using inmate call. Goodbye. Well, hello, and welcome to AQS Inmate Call, and I'm your host, Joel Wilborn. And in this episode, I'll just look into some encounters, personal encounters I've had with uh, transgender people, just to give you an idea of the scope of these uh, individuals. Namely, that we're in the Washington Correction Center for Women. Now, I've, I've had several encounters with um, several transgender people because it was interesting to me. I wanted to learn about them. And a lot of them, I just flat out said, the only reason I'm talking to you is just to learn, to get information from the source instead of reading it secondhand. And they were really happy to, to help. And they would talk about incidences where they were just treated badly and then I talk to uh, female inmates who say that the trans people get a lot of uh, special treatment and so I don't hear that from the trans people saying yes we do I hear that a lot of them say that they're they're mistreated as well and that's easy to understand because there's prison officials who like certain individuals and there's some that don't. I mean, you have people in there that are racist and and uh, transphobic, I guess, and and um, uh, anti-Semitic. It's just they're human, and you're gonna you're gonna find that stuff. And the way I look at it, if people are against another gender or religion or race, as long as they don't violate rights and don't break the law let them do what they want in america we're free to be racist and and when somebody says you're a racist it doesn't it, it doesn't draw a red flag to me because so what but if a person is a racist and then starts burning down churches or chasing down people in the street. I mean, we had a recent incident where some visiting uh, athletic teams came over and they were just going out to uh, enjoy the city. And these alleged racists, I'm not sure if that's what they were, they just drove by and was hollering out racist names. So it was like a racist hate Incident that came up, and that's not something that the city wanted to promote. And that's not something that makes us proud. But they just drew the line, or they crossed the line, because they actually broke the law and violated these people's rights, and that wasn't fair. Fortunately, the community came together and and uh, went out actively looking for these folks to press charges. That's that's not what we want. And in prison, it's the same thing. If a, like a, one of the trans females told me that she was trying to you know, use the bathroom, change her clothes, and there's male officers just looking at her. And she said, I didn't like them sitting there staring at me. I, I, I need my privacy. And we kind of can guess what was going on through these people's minds why they were doing that kind of stuff uh, but hearing from the trans person was nice because I got to see how she felt and I got to see uh, what some of the incidences that they go through and she had a lot of paperwork and she's doing her, her legal filings too and I, I hope people who have their rights violated do uh, file a lot of lawsuits we, we need this to get out to the public. Now, years ago, there was a, a trans person that I contacted at the Washington Correction Center for Women. And uh, her name was uh, Princess Zoe Andromeda 
love. And a lot of transgender people who are in prison, it dealt with a, a sex offense. And I, I, I look at the, the crime. If this person is accused of, of raping a 12-year-old girl and then going into the prison and grooming women because a lot of young women go into the prison and a lot of young women who look like children are in there and they're they're prime suspects I mean not suspects but they're prime victims for uh, sex offenders especially those that could really um, mess up their mind really kind of like gaslighting for them but Princess Zoe that's what he did and talking to him he put out the regular uh, information about transgender people and I didn't really get too much from him and I thought well he's going to be released soon maybe I can find something out after that and the other prisoners when I would ask them about him they said he would strut around and you want some of this and look at me and he was just kind of like women are in prison they're deprived of their men and their 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 intimate relationships and he figured he could fill in for them and a lot of them really disgusted and when I talked to the trans people who actually are identifying correctly they want to be with men and they want to be in the, the female prison because they don't feel comfortable in the male prison these folks were saying people like Princess Zoe really made them look bad now after Princess Zoe got out I had a brief encounter with him but he converted back to a man and there's a phrase in there straight out the gate where women will go in and they'll do kind of like lesbian activities but they just change their ways when they get out and then there are some that are just bisexual it doesn't matter to them either way and this kind of goes along with the normal thing he goes in there and he didn't really change though his sexual orientation was still toward women but the state doesn't want to get the don't, they don't want to upset the wrong people let's put it that way and that was that was kind of bad and the people that knew him there was a couple that said that they liked him he was a good person but I just really couldn't get him to to say anything to me that would show that he was fake that he was just using this the system hopefully he won't go back I haven't really heard too much about him and he he may have gone back to his uh, his birth name, Hobby Bingham. It's easy to look him up, see his picture, and you know just just to say, oh, I've got long hair. I'll braid it. I'll tell people. But to me, if a person goes into a prison, let's say a transgender woman, and then says, I want breast implants, and then I want to get the sex change. The prison to pay for that and you know this person is being legit now I've talked to a few females like one female she said I don't mind having my breast removed but I'll keep everything else and she dresses the part looks the part of a male and when she talks to me she talks about females but she doesn't want to be in the male prison and I know when I when I sit with folks that are part of this community, the LGBTQ community, uh, they tend to recognize each other. They'll know when a person is is plain, and they know when a person's legit. And like any human, there's a few hits and misses, but that community is pretty much tight, and I respect that. And to to show disrespect 
for straight people or even the trans community by faking this. You know, you got people who are cross-dressers and you got people who are drag queens out there. And that's what they do. And they're not trying to uh, show any disrespect for anybody. They're just staying within their lane, so to speak. And that's a world I'm still looking into on this. Now, uh, recently, I was contacted to help a person find an, an attorney who was raped in the Washington Correction Center for Women by a trans woman. Kind of like the Princess Zoe story. And it just kind of brought back all of that. And so, of course, I can help this person get an attorney. I, th th that's that's it's like a, a guaranteed thing there, but you just have to do it right. So I really have my work cut out for me. But she, her, her issue hit the news, and it's bad to have that happen and then to have to stay in that area because when people are traumatized, they like to kind of get away, but they can't when they're in the prison. Mentally, they can't get away. Physically, they can't get away. And then they're just going to have to deal with it, whether they like it or not. And it's kind of forcing them into a, a situation. And then how's that feel? Because in the women's prison, they could put her in a prison cell and put a trans female in there with them. Maybe a real one. Someone who has no intention of harming her at all. But what's going to go through her mind? I know one of my... Uh, my friends said she went into a cell with a trans woman and she had been abused by a, an ex-boyfriend in an abusive relationship and she didn't feel comfortable being in there with a biological male and it just brought back some bad memories. Sitting in a cell with a woman doesn't do that for her. I mean it can, especially if the woman starts attacking her, but at that time it wasn't that the female wasn't the issue, it was a male. And the prison has to work with that. And so we've got these people who are pretending and this this has to stop. And I, I think putting this case out there might lean toward that. Now I just started uh, looking into the situation of a young lady named uh, Sensura. Now she was on a TV show Love During Lockup. Now they had asked me when I was dating Paula Gardner but Paula didn't want to do that. She would, she got some she wants to protect her privacy and that's that's fine so we didn't do that. But Sensura did and uh, she became I, I think the full season went through I didn't even see the show but it's it's uh, one of those things that fans of that particular show know her name and her relationship didn't work out where they would uh, talk with a person who's dating somebody that's in prison and uh, find out how how it progresses and it's Dating people in prison is not easy. It's a tough, tough job. And there's a lot of heartache that goes with it. And I, I'm used to it. And I, I like that kind of challenge. I like that kind of uh, lifestyle. But it's not for everybody. And, and apparently it wasn't for this guy. So uh, since Ray goes back to her, her regular life, until she hits the news again and this time an anonymous prison official reported to the news media that a transgender female was caught having intercourse with censor in prison cell and Sex among the inmates does happen quite a bit. A lot of times the prison officials just turn the other cheek. But I'm thinking that with 
Sincera, it was because of her uh, association with this television show that this person went out. Because transgender people do that quite a bit, and it's consensual, they don't care. And the way Sincera tells it, she she knew she did something wrong, and, and it's just more like she got caught. And that's the life of a, a criminal. Even the, those who are convicted and sitting in a prison cell, they know the risk, and usually when they get caught, they'll just accept it. I, I took a chance, I lost, I accept it. They're not sitting there, I never did this, this didn't happen. She's not saying she didn't do anything. She just kind of told me, yeah, I did something I shouldn't have been doing. I broke the rules. And I asked, well, what do you want an attorney for? And she was saying privacy. And that's something that she has a right to. That's, even though we need to know that kind of stuff that goes on in the prison, we don't need to know any details. She was concerned that her her name, her image, her, everything was out there. And she said several of the stories said she was raped. Some said that she was, that it was consensual. And then they were given a lot of details and stuff. It was just things that didn't make her feel very comfortable. And she just... Talking with her, I can tell she was just not in the right state of mind. She's just, it's just very traumatic for her. That's not fair to her. And uh, I asked about this prison official, and we're trying to trying to figure out who exposed this to the to the media. And she knows the person who caught her and wrote her up, wrote her up on an infraction, and, uh, but the news media said it was an anonymous person. Now, if you're going to do something like that, how in the world can you remain anonymous? I mean, the, the people who are involved in that know, and so if you come out and say, well, uh, an anonymous person told me, Censor knows exactly who caught her. And yeah, somebody else could have told, told about it. But we'll have to investigate and find, find out. She can go after the DOC who was supposed to be protecting her. If sex is not allowed and it's against the rules, you don't put a biological male in a prison cell with a biological female. That's almost like you're encouraging it. This, this Correction centers are full of convicted criminals. These people commit crimes. They have no or little to no respect for the law. And a lot of crimes are still committed in there. I know a few people who are smuggling in drugs. They're prison officials and they're, they're people who are incarcerated. And unfortunately, nobody listens to me over there at the DOC, so it just keeps right on going. But there are situations that those of us on the outside can help with. And in this particular case of her privacy, we can work with that. And the DOC should, if these prison officials catch these folks doing that, they keep it within those walls. And a lot of stuff they do, even the illegal stuff, they'll keep it secret. But this one was exposed and it really it really hurt her and it's it's tough for her rehabilitation because how she's supposed to trust these officials somebody could come up to her and tell her something that's dangerous to her and she's going to question it and before she wouldn't and so she's she's in that point where we need to do something to try to put it put an end to it I would prefer that she just be transferred to another prison, but there's only one other prison, and I think they're slowly trying to close that one down. And uh, the prison officials, once they find out that this information has been exposed, they shouldn't transfer people. And I asked her, what happened to this person? She said, well, as far as I know, he's still here. And... Why why would you allow something like that? Why why can prison officials go out and tell this kind of stuff? 
he easily could have said that two people were caught in a cell and left the names out, but he didn't. And I asked, um, does this guy have some kind of vendetta against you or something? And she was saying, well, he's transphobic. And a lot of times that's obvious because the way people describe some of the prison officials in there, I can see that. And there are some of the, the incarcerated people who are against certain uh, genders and a gender identifying people and, and races and stuff. And so even though what he did wasn't really illegal, The, the fact that he did it in that way is kind of, uh, it, it kind of makes me question what's going on. Is he doing this because of her notoriety? Is he doing this because he's against transgender people? Or is he trying to make a statement that these guys should not be in here? This is the kind of stuff that happens. But leave it to me. I'll work what I can to get this thing uh, fixed in a way that it proves the point and gives the, the uh, participants some, uh, some uh, peace of mind and a, a little uh, justice along the way. And hopefully we can continue to expose the stuff that's going on in there let people know that there's some situations that you just cannot accept and uh, there are different ways to do things I'm a pro sentencing alternative I don't think everybody should be locked away and as uh, Shane Goldsby said there it's a correction center, but they're not correcting anything. This is this. These are things that would not happen on the outside. These are things that would not happen under house arrest, or in a, a special camp, maybe, or a, a rehabilitation center. But maybe this is maybe there is a a, a bright side to this. We'll just have to wait and see how it goes along. But in the meantime, I would just like the public to know that incarcerated people do have a right to privacy. You can't just call a prison and ask, you know, when was the last pap smear that, that this inmate had? Or you can't ask for medical records. Washington does have a uh, Freedom of Information Act, but, there's, but you need permission to get certain information that's considered private and these prison officials need to know that it's hard enough to be caught and have to, to go to a hearing for it than to add public scrutiny on it she didn't she didn't deserve that well thanks for tuning in and I hope you'll have discussions about crime and privacy and and uh, the purpose of correction center and and maybe together we can we can put a bite in crime and uh, reduce recidivism and uh, give people a reason to stay out of prison and stay away from the life of crime. Well, go out and have yourself a marvelous day and make awesome memories for tomorrow.